cuppa with Janine and Jenny. We have our cups of tea today. And I have the lovely Janine Castle, astrologer extraordinaire, on the line. How are you going, Janine? Hello, Jennifer, psychic medium. Very good. Good. And today we thought we might have a chat between us about fortune, you know, because people are always wanting to know if they're going to be rich or how they're going to be successful. And last time we had it, we did a talk about luck which you explained to me was very different from fortune. So fortune is about where you earn your money. So it can be in certain houses, can't it, um, which will indicate uh, the best probably career path for you to make your money, to earn a living. And it can be whether you're in poverty, like a low level of income, or it can be great wealth. And I guess that would depend on a lot of the other areas of the chart, wouldn't it, as you talked about in luck. That be correct. Yeah, there's several factors involved when mm. you look at a chart. There's your source of income, and then there's your career, and then there's those random sort of avenues of fortune that that you've really got to look at the three. Have a look at Jupiter, your luck planet as well, and uh, and weigh it all up because a lot of people have an income stream, but that's not really where their fortune comes from. Their fortune can come from the inheritance, even though they earn money in one way. And then people can earn money in one way, but that's not their career. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more complex in astrology than what you would think. But, look, you've done readings for lots of fortunate people in your life, Jennifer. What's it like reading for someone that has fortune? That has money yeah um it's such an interesting thing um because i guess whether they've inherited it uh or whether they've worked for it they if, if it have been if they've had it for a long time they do have an attitude of expectation that this will continue and i guess um Mostly it does in our world, um, in the Western world, it usually does. Um, I think um, I find them um, really interesting, especially as you know, I love business. So I find the business side of it really interesting. And, you know, I've done a lot of readings on diversification of their businesses and where they should put their money in next. So it's always really interesting for me um to look at different areas or different industries that they would like to that i feel they should go into they don't always follow what i say but um, when they have done it's it's some of it works out mediocre and some of it really takes off so i guess it's also timing which is why i like them to get their astrology done as well um, it is timing it's absolutely timing. And as we're talking, I'm thinking of a reading we both did for someone who was quite nationally well-known. And, um, and he had a blazing career in the media and then had a career in local politics. Do you remember that reading? And he had had a fall from grace. Um, Do you remember that one? Um, Okay, so he'd had a fall from grace. He'd lost his uh, local election position. So he'd lost his position in the local government. And he had had a lot of success. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking wider. Um, so, yes, now that's an interesting thing, isn't it? So this man had yeah. a lot of success in business, had a lot of success overseas and came a oh. cropper uh, because I feel his attitude was fairly entitled um, and perhaps continued uh, his bullish way of making success in a government area and um, that doesn't go down so well. Because as we know, government's very slow 
it takes years to get things through it's a lot of red tape and you have to tippy toe through things and not upset anyone and that wasn't his personality that's not what how he got things done and yeah he was, he was well Trump of his area. yeah and he, oh exactly and even though he was popular um his colleagues around him weren't so fond of him and so that that was a really interesting um that was an interesting reading wasn't it and yeah, we, had, we did it together we and did, i went first yes and i looked at his chart and i thought um i can't see success i can't see you regaining that level of success so it really was a fall from grace and then you did the reading and, and you sort of said the same thing and so it all went down like a lead balloon yes if you remember that moment. yes and he was quite miffed. yeah because um i also told him a few personal things wouldn't work as well and well he wasn't happy with that but that's turned out true and oh. um we did think that he could make another comeback, though. Um, yeah. Be quite successful, but that hasn't happened. Maybe he's been burnt too bad. Several years down the track, though. But yeah. at that time, because he was he he was very accustomed to a level of good fortune that had been going on for decades in yes. many areas, of the media and business, and he was not accustomed to not winning. No, and, and so sorry. he had a big F for failure, and we caught him on the tail end of his misfortune. Yes, and I always remember sitting in the other other room when you were giving him his reading, so I didn't hear anything. And I remember a very famous personality in spirit came to me, and I didn't tell him this um, that he did the right thing by. Uh, in his field and thank me asked me to thank him for what he did mm. and I never got around to telling him that uh, because I thought I imagined it and then of course then I found out later that there was a connection mm. so that that was really yeah it was an interesting oh very um powerful personality um, yeah and when you read for someone who has, who's so used to fortune and they're not getting it, I think the, the, the person you read for can have a little mini tantrum because we're not telling them what they want to hear. But on the other hand, we also have readings for people who are quite modest and have had modest lives and we can see them coming into good fortune as well mm. um and they probably don't believe us either when that happens no um but you and I have been reading for a mutual client now for some years mm -hmm. who has been successful in business and is looking like she's remaining successful in business so I thought we could have a chat about her well, that'd be great okay so is this Sharon yeah okay. this is we'll call her sharon so um maybe you can tell us a bit about how we came to know sharon i came to know sharon through uh, a friend of mine who is also um, a very wealthy multi-millionaire man um, who lived interstate and um i got to know him through got to know her through him and then i think he introduced you to her as well uh, to get her astrology chart done after I told him to go and get his chart done with you. So it was a bit incestuous, but that's how it went. And um, she at that time was in the health industry and very successful and had been since she graduated uni and uh, had followed the family footsteps in that direction too, didn't she? Yeah, she did. She followed her father's industry in health. Yes, and um, she had many successful businesses and we think we talked about this a little bit before and we did a, a joint reading. We were practising joint readings at the time and um, you 
given her some information for a following year from the chart and then I looked at photos of her and her businesses and her business partner and told her um, some insightful, uh, given her some insights into some uh, devious operations going on with her partner, which we followed through for the following year and went to court and we won the court case and it was really an amazing journey. And then um, she's now selling those businesses and going into a new industry, isn't she? Yes, which is also health. Yep. So she's just moving into another area of health. Yep. Um, I have to say before we go on, Jennifer, you were really at your best with those readings. We, we might have done 10, 15, 20 readings that year mm. for this person. And you, you, you were really in your element. You, you have a gift for smelling a rat and you smell to rat in this business partner from the very beginning. And it's because of that insight, and, and I concurred as well, I knew there was something rotten in Denmark. Uh, because of those insights, we got to know this client particularly well and we've mm -hmm. got to know her strengths. Yeah. And I find her chart quite remarkable because she has incredible strengths money business and also fortune so um she's such a perfect example of what it's like to be born with lucky stars for business money and fortune absolutely because and you know the great thing about sharon is that she's very calm she seemed you know she she's quite calm through it all and it was such a stressful time um you know, uh, because we kept, un, you know, finding more and more and more stuff and it was so stressful. Um, but she was, she was, oh, she was like a dog with a bone, wasn't she? She was, she was onto it. She was like a bloodhound and she uh, wouldn't give it up. But she seemed to, I would have to admire her, how she seemed to take it all within her abilities to cope with it um and uh, even though it was an extremely stressful time so i presume that's one of her assets in business as well yeah and i think look she's sober minded she's intelligent mm. um she's level headed and i think if you're going to keep your fortune keep your prosperity keep your money and and a storm comes into your business life if you ride the so storm with a level head and sobriety, you can get through without losing everything. Mm. And and it, it, Sharon doesn't have a big ego. She's no. actually very humble woman and, and she knows her strengths and weaknesses. And for that reason, she doesn't have those falls from grace. No. Like our previous client we were telling yes. you about, she doesn't fall from grace and go, oh, I don't deserve this because she doesn't do stupid things. She doesn't. And she lives a very simple life, really. You know, she drives a very simple car and just lives a very simple life. You wouldn't pick her as a successful woman that she is. And that is a lot of humbleness there. And so there was no, um, she didn't really have the worry about loss of face through this, you know, that she hmm. just thought, well, I have to deal with this. I picked this person as my partner, business partner, and now I'm just going to have to fix this up. And that was her attitude. It wasn't about, well, what will people think of me? Um, it wasn't about that at all. It was just getting at the truth. And, and even uh, though she was born with great strengths in uh, business and money, um, she just think things through very carefully. She doesn't take unnecessary risks. So she doesn't jeopardise that natural ability to attract prosperity, um, which I think is really the key. You yeah. can't abuse the gifts that you're given or they will be taken away. And I've seen some very big falls from grace um, because people are quite delusional. Um, 
perhaps too much water in the chart can do that, can make you a bit delusional in your grandeur. But um, when you have a lot of fire and earth like she does, it does give you a, a, a real practicality yeah. of the situation. Yeah. It your, your prosperity, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. without a real earnest respect for it as well yeah. i'm just going to share the screen yep jennifer i'm not that's better i've got it all right so wow. up here in the tenth house yep is sharon's professional life her career wow down here on the second house is money and then we have fifth house of creativity and speculative business now, the first thing i look for uh in a business chart or a business question for a reading is the sign that's up here at 12 o'clock which is the profession now in sharon's case she's a health professional we won't say which one she's a health professional but she is in a very conservative medical area of yeah. health okay and that's Capricorn. Capricorn represents the establishment, the old boys club, you know, the corporate side of business. Yeah. And it's also about investments. It's about, in, you know, investing in a business that is stable and long term. And uh, Capricorn is very much the government as well. And as you know, her business is quite tightly entwined with government legislation. Yeah. Yep. So we both know Sharon to be a bit of a radical person in her lifestyle. Yes. Um, she's a very brave person. She doesn't necessarily conform as a, as a personality, but her chart is saying to conform in business. Right. So, so in business, she would do well in the more conservative sectors of business. Yeah. Uh, and the 10th house is all of the 10th house planets are all the different areas of a personality that come through business. So we now have, we have five planets out of her 10 planets, which is half of her personality in the 10th house of business, which means if she doesn't do business, she doesn't get to access all her talents unless she you know, has a business, she can't be who she really is. So that's really interesting in itself. Now, the 10th house loves to have Mars and it loves to have Saturn and it loves to have the sun, those three planets in that area. Now, mm -hmm. her Mars is pretty much on top of her midheaven so even though it's on that side it's because it doesn't fit it should really be sitting right at 12 o'clock so her mars her sun and her saturn are in their favorite areas mars is your ability to be driven um saturn is your ability to do hard work and your sun is where you where you shine in the world you know where you're special and amazing yeah. So it's all in the 10th house of business. What an incredible advantage. I don't have any of that there and neither do you. No. And she's also got um, Mercury there, which is all about your ability to communicate and network. And then we've got my favourite one, Jupiter's there as well, the planet she's of luck. Got luck. So really, wow. she's got luck there as well. She's got hard work. She's got talent. She's got drive and she's got luck. luck. All in the area. Can't really fail, can she? You cannot fail. Mm. And so, I find it hard to imagine what it would be like having this chart, yeah. where you know you can do no wrong in business. And I know this this lady's had something like thirteen businesses in her sector of health, yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's been the owner rather than the worker flogging herself to death on the floor she's owned the business That's she's correct. invested in the business correct. capricorn's all about she's just no worker here grinding her knuckles to the bone she owns it she's the boss now when you're also analyzing this you look at the ruler of the house of uh, business and the ruler is saturn and and when the when saturn the ruler of the 10th house is in the 10th house 
then it's even more stronger. And then I go down to the second house of money and where you draw your income. Now, she doesn't have luck in that area, but, you know, you can't have luck everywhere. But the ruler of the house of income is, uh, well, we've got Taurus and the ruler is um, Venus. And Venus is right there in the area of Korea. Yes. So how does she get her income? She gets it through her business. So she draws her salary through that business. Now, you might think everybody does, but they don't. A lot of people are supplementing incomes in other areas and they're starting off in business and, you know, got a few income streams. No, her income stream is through her business, which is quite auspicious. Yes. Okay. And the other auspicious thing is, oh, I forgot to say that when you have such a loaded 10th house, it's quite common to have a career that follows your father's footsteps. Oh, okay. And she the did sun. follow the career of her father. Her father yeah. had a business. She stepped into the business when she graduated and then invested with her father and her parents and then it ended up being her, you know, 13th business oh, later. That's right. Mm. Yeah. So what about? Yeah. Yep. I was going to okay, ask. Part of fortune. This is what you wanted to see. And I wanted to point out here that I've relocated her chart to Sydney, even though she was born overseas, because her business life was in Sydney. So it's slightly different to what it was when she was born, but that's what I do. I relocate to the area of the business. Now, this cross that looks like a hot cross bun down here, this is called the part of fortune. And there was a movement 100 years ago after the Golden Dawn movement where we started inventing new things. And we started using this thing called the part of fortune, which is an, an Arabic part. There are many, many Arabic parts, but this is my favourite one, part of fortune. It's a point, it's not a planet. And there's lots of calculations involved and I'm really bad at that, but your chart will tell you. Her part of fortune is right down here at the point of family, okay? So this tells me that fortune comes via the family and it's also in the sign of cancer, which is the sign of family. Mm. Now, um, this client has just had, uh, her father just passed away. Right. So I will assume that she will get, you know, an inheritance. inheritance from her father. But, you know, the, what, what is fortune? It's sort of handed to you, isn't it, fortune? You don't have to create fortune. You don't have to sweat on it. It just comes to you. And what the difference between luck and fortune? You can have luck in relationship without having any money. But to me, fortune is luck with the money. Yes. That's what I think. What do you think fortune is? Well, I, I think um, luck to me is um, you, can't, you can't do anything wrong. So if it's in your relationships, those people always have good relationships. You know, it seems to work out for them, whereas other people might date people who just, are losers or can't get it together or they just can't find the right partner people with luck uh jupiter i guess that would be in their relationship sector for instance you know just it, they just fall into good relationships it doesn't matter and fortune to me it, i think that's about um you know what comes to mind is the is that we've got a um, story called the fortune a fortunate life by an old digger from years ago. I can't think of his name at the moment, and it was written in the early 1900s. And his fortunate life was about I had a good life, you know, like I had um, even though it was hard from him, his point of view, it was a good life because he got everything he needed. So for me, fortune is about even when things are really bad, um, you get a break in life. Maybe you get some money, maybe yeah. someone dies and you get an inheritance or you win the lotto or you 
you suddenly get offered this wonderful position in the job or you suddenly meet the right man or woman and marry and get really settled and have a happy home life if that's what where your fortune is going to be. So I think fortune can be something that luck to me is out of the blue in some ways and fortune is what is meant to come to you. I guess that's how I look at it. Yeah. It's a bit hard. And fortune it? is a sort of um, compilation of events too. You know, yeah. it's not just one event. It's not a fortunate event. It's a fortunate life, a fortunate period of time. Yeah. Where many factors are working with you. and But there is an element of finance involved with yeah, fortune. Okay. When we want good fortune, yeah, there we is. sort of want cash. We want we want possessions. We want a little bit more than just luck. I think. Okay, so so if, I think if this fortune was in your chart of relationship, maybe if your partner passed on, you inherit a lot of money. Maybe something like that, as opposed to just being lucky to marry that person. That's right. Exactly. You know. You could sort of have fortune if they passed away and you inherited their their assets. That yes. sort of fortune in a in a roundabout way. So for Sharon here, her fortune comes via family, via family roots and connection. And I know we know her quite well at this point. And there's been several fortunate contributions her family have yes. made. And, you know, my part of fortune is not there and neither is yours. So um, you can really see the difference when a family have contributed to someone's fortune. It's, it's oh, fairly absolutely. obvious. So absolutely. So that's what it's got. Yeah. And so looking at that very rich 10th house of Korea, her part of fortune and the fact that the, the rulers of her income and her career are all together in here, which in Vedic astrology they call good yogas, yeah. um, which means highly auspicious. And uh, the Indians like to be say things are good and bad. This is extra good. Okay. Um, she's also got a very creative house here. Like she's her her inventive powers are very, very strong with Uranus in the air of career. Yeah, you know she can invent things she yeah. can just spontaneously make things Happen. grow in a creative mm. sense so you know that that's probably all I need to say about that yeah. one that that's what I call a fortunate chart so so with the um Arab symbol of fortune it, it doesn't make a difference to what house it's in yes exactly so can you in give, this case can you give yeah, me I'll go through the, yeah if you could I was gonna say can you give me another example of your of a chart you did that had the fortune in another place in yeah. another house yes now I did a reading for someone who was a model and she had her part of fortune in the first house of the physical body right right it would fit she was a very successful model financially mm -hmm. and so her fortune came through her physical body yep that's a good one yeah um another one might be through friends yep. the 11th house through friends it's not what you know it's who you know and be yep. a friend open up doorways for you and then all of a sudden you had a a, a fortunate sort of um some fortunate event happened and you end up getting a really high paying job and then you end up being ceo or a friend yes um ninth house is through travel fortune through travel and through education so it could be you know that you go overseas you uh, meet somebody, they turn out to be a prince, you end up living in their house and then you end up, I don't know, marrying some prince, prince from an Asian country. I mean, who knows? Things like yeah. that happen. The eighth house is often the house of in-laws in Vedic astrology. So 
if you have your part of fortune there, your fortune comes through your partner and their family, not your own biological family. So it comes through them and their family, specifically uh, the mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So the Indians would say this is a house of mother-in-law. So if you put that in, in the context of fortune, fortune comes through the husband if you're a female and their mother um believe it or not seventh house is the partner themselves sixth house is work yeah. you know i i used to know this woman and she had this incredible ability to get jobs and she had really no career and what she she used to do a lot of blue collar work and her, her her parents worked very hard as greengrocers. She was good at apples and pears and all that sort of thing. And when she was about 30, she moved to Adelaide and she went down the road to the greengrocers and said, oh, do you have a job? And he said, yeah, yeah, sure. She worked there for a month or so and then the owner disappeared. So her what? boss never turned up one day. And so she ended up running this fruit and veg shop for several weeks because the owner had disappeared and there was nowhere to put the money. <laughs> and so she ended up inheriting this fruit and veg shop with it and he owned it, but I don't know what happened in the story. I can't remember. And I remember thinking, how much luck would you have oh. to just walk in as a fruit and veg worker and inherit a business? So and it was a cash business. That's an amazing story. So that really confirms that fortune is really about wealth, isn't it? It is. And so that's the sixth house, your workplace. Yeah. Not your career, your workplace. So she had no career. No. She would just turn up to these oddball jobs and things would just go her way, <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> and I remember she another job in a health food shop and she didn't know anything about health and she ended up managing it because she was so good at it and you know things like that would happen but I never forget this she had all this cash from the fruit and veg selling coming out of her pockets and nowhere to put it so that's a real example of part of fortune in the sixth house part of fortune in the fifth house is creativity but it's also children so it could be that your fortune comes through your children. Fourth house is family. Third house is communication and siblings could come through the siblings. Second house is money, but also financial investments like stocks, shares, okay. possessions, things like that. You know, my husband's obsessed with finding things at garage sales that are valuable. And he's got this dream that he's going to find a Jackson Pollock in the tip <laughs> or in some sort of garage sale. You know, Jackson Pollocks go for like tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. So that's what this reminds me of, you know, coming across a possession or a um, some sort of commodity, an item, and then being able to resell it for a lot of money, you know, buying stuff and selling it for exorbitant amounts, you know, having that ability. And some people have that. They say, oh, I bought it for X and sold it for Y yeah. and I made a bomb on it. Yeah. So that's yeah. that. Now, there are some unfortunate people that have part of fortune in the 12th house of spirituality which is the least fortunate house materially. So the great fortune for these people comes from their spiritual path. And it may be, you know, I'm thinking of like the guru that was, he's dead now, Sai Baba. He used to manifest things, right? Material items. It could be something like you're a devotee of Sai Baba and you were one of the lucky ones who lined up in the queue or in India and he manifested a Mercedes Benz for you. I don't know. It's that sort of a story. Lucky with, with your spiritual path. It may be like I've got a friend who, who married a man um, 
who was part of an, an ashram circle and she moved to America and now that they've set up an ashram in his community and she now is, you know, the owner and the, uh, the manager of, of her own ashram. But she walked into that situation. Yeah. She okay. didn't bring that with her. She walked into that situation where, yeah. So wow. a little bit different in the 12th house. Your fortune comes from uh, overseas, faraway lands. It also comes from the other side. Yeah. And I mean the spirit world. Yeah. It could mean that spirits help you to find your fortune, fortune. which mm. is an interesting concept. You mm. might be able to help me out because I don't have any examples, Jennifer, but there'd have to be some examples. What, what about the, who's the guy who's the American medium? He's a Cancerian. What's his name? John Edwards. John Edwards. You know, he's made his fortune by being a psychic medium, hasn't he? Yes, he? yep. He has. So there, there would be a good example of, of yeah. a very rare occasion where, you know, talking to spirits has actually created fortune. And you would know there's lots of mediums who do amazing mediumship but earn nothing. Yep. And there's a lot um, really that did very well out of it too, a lot that yeah. done. Yeah. And they're not necessarily that good at it sometimes. They're just in fortunate situations where yeah. they can, they're just you know. They're just in the opportunities, yep. Yep. Yeah, meet the right person who happens to be in TV and, and off we go all of a sudden <laughs> they've got their own psychic medium show. Yes. Mm. And it sounds like a little bit like it's a destiny sort of um, it is. mark as well, Janine. Do you think? It's definitely a destiny mark. This is really your your mark of blessing in your life. And we all have it. And like we've said in our Jupiter talks, you've really got to go with it and yeah. not fight it and not be envious of other people's fortune from a different area. Yeah. And uh, so this is a really another good reason to have your chart done, isn't it? To find out exactly. It is where you where uh, your destiny is where your good fortune is um because sometimes life gets hard and if you know that out of the blue something in this particular area of your chart will come good it might give you a little bit of hope or a little bit of encouragement to keep going oh that was fascinating yeah that, that's right we also have to remember in our culture fortune is a different definition to other cultures. Of course. And I want to point that out too. Yep, yep. That in our white Western Australian culture, we value the prosperity is is career and business. Correct. You know, that's prosperity for us. But if you go to some Asian countries or African countries, you're probably going to children. Sorry. Sorry. My you know, <laughs> Sorry. So yeah. prosperity comes through, it comes through how many children you have in some cultures. Like if you don't have any children, you have no prosperity in the future. Um, and then there's other cultures that will say your prosperity comes through your good karma, which is your spiritual path. Prosperity could come through gurus in some cultures and uh it's all quite different. So it's very relative to the culture that you're in. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess life will make that happen, won't it? Mm. So it just yeah. sounds a bit like destiny as well. It does. Mm. It does. I think fortune is definitely what your destiny has for you. Yeah. And I think, you know, the road to unhappiness is, is the path of, you know, wanting your fortune to be something where it's not mm. well that's right and that's why I wanted to do this because I thought people could find out where their fortune is and then that way they can un get to understand the whole destiny of their life a bit better you know I think sometimes you can wish and hope your life away um 
for lack of information and this gives you concrete information um may not tell you exactly how it's going to happen but certainly in the area and that that must be such a help i should think for people yeah well thanks Janine. well there you go amazing and it was so we're learning such a lot aren't we right and i think i think you're right astrology can really help that but what i don't do as well as you is hone in on the details so i have to mm. say we're a good compliment like that because mm. i can look at the big picture and say oh yes more medicine um plumbing electrics but you, and i get the timing right but you really get the details of mm. the yes or no questions too yeah. so i'd highly recommend both readings yeah. to, to get the whole picture yeah yeah you know it's good hmm Okay, ciao baby, see ya. See ya.